Hey, Scott here this morning, and I just wanted to do a quick response or my kind of follow-up to Nomad Capitalist talking about his definition in a short of a to, of a, an expat versus an immigrant, because there's a lot of loaded information or usage in these terms that a lot of us hate, but they really are useful terms because there are different things called for different people. And I've done some videos on this in the past, but he just did this one. So I wanted to respond about it. But one of the things that is important to understand about most of these terms is that they imply some amount of knowledge that we can't have. For example, the dictionary definition of an immigrant says that it needs to be a person who moves to and settles permanently in a new country. Well, the idea of permanence doesn't make any sense because you can't know if someone is then an immigrant until after they've died, right? Okay, they passed on. We look back in their lives and say they were an immigrant. But what if they move to a new country and then move on again? Were they ever an immigrant? Do you only get to be an immigrant in your final country? Is immigration defined by the place that you end up dying? So wherever you were, that is where you immigrated to. And you'll never know for sure until time is up, it doesn't really make sense. So I think what the dictionary means, the spirit of immigration, is moving to a place with the intent of not moving on, right? So, so for example, I am an immigrant in Nicaragua by the best definition you can reasonably come up with, which is I have moved to Nicaragua. I do not have an intent of moving on. I have no plans to move on. I am making roots and establishing myself and doing the things to integrate with the culture, which is what Nomad Capitalist said. And, and, and that makes me an immigrant here. And that makes sense. The one thing that you may say, well, maybe I'm not an immigrant is that um, I, you know, I don't have a passport. I don't have a path to a passport. I'm not in the process of getting a passport. And my residency in theory is, is not permanent residency. We sometimes call it that, but it's long-term residency. It's many, many years, and it's expected to be renewed at the end of that for many, many more years. And that shouldn't be a problem. And I have no reason to anticipate it being a problem, but that is my path to permanence. So does that make me an immigrant here? I think by most people's definitions, most ways of looking at what the dictionary is trying to say, because they can only write so much, that yes, I'm an immigrant. Now, the question is, am I an expat? From the perspective of Nicaragua, no, I'm not an expat. I'm an immigrant. From the perspective of the United States, which is my home country, for those who don't know, I am an expat. What does that mean? So with Nomad Capitalist, he said that expat, in his definition, was someone who left their home country but was not seeking a permanent spot in a new one and would, you know, move around or go back. To some degree, I think that's correct, but not entirely. So, X, so you can't discuss these without the concept of perspective. Immigration is something you are from the perspective of the place you immigrate to. Expat and emigration are in the perspective of the place you leave, right? So my perspective in Nicaragua is as an immigrant. The other option would be as a tourist, right? Those are the really two ways to look at it. You can try to make up that there's this in-between thing called expatting, but really that's just being a tourist and we're just trying to come up with a cool word for it in that particular case where, yeah, you're on vacation for a really long period of time, but, you know, and we already have digital nomad for the people who move around and work. Now, they're digital nomads because the digital is the part where they're working. The nomad is just a nomad. We don't need expat because we have nomad, right? So why don't we call people who are moving in non non uh, solid anywhere nomads rather than expats? So expat, in my Everything I've looked into, every bit of study of the word, the term means expatriate, right? It's short for expatriation. Patriation is the act of, you know, existing in a country, right? You're born, you're patriated. If you were to move back to your home country, normally unplanned, that is repatriation. Expatriation is the act of leaving your country with the intent of not returning, in my, that is like, if you intend on returning, you're a tourist or a nomad, right? Which is fine. Nothing wrong with these things. But the idea, the usage of expat should be, I believe, where you are intending to remain an expat is not a temporary status that you are, well, I'm on this extended trip and, you know, it's a long time. And I realize that people can intend to, you can, like, I'm in Nicaragua. I intend to be here. What if something happened and I had to return to the United States? Would that mean I was never an immigrant? Was that mean I was never an expat? No. No, I don't think so. It's just the intent. I think that's the only useful way to look at it is what you intend to do, how you are treating it, how the places that you go are treating it. So an expat, logically, is a person who has left their home country and is not intending to return, 
but it doesn't imply that they've immigrated somewhere else. So in my example of myself, I am both an expat and an immigrant, and probably I should use the term immigrant more often because it is as an immigrant that I far more identify and is far more important, and it tells you far more about me. Uh, but it is also important to have the term expat there because I am both. An immigrant could be a person who didn't want to leave their home country, uh, but an expat implies a desire to leave your home country, not for any particular reason. It just implies that it was a desire to go somewhere else, and you can be an expat and many are, without having immigration. It is very common to want to move around the world and never plan to return, but also don't, at least at any particular time, have decided on a place where you're going to be permanent. A great example of this is Scott Moore from There's Got to Be Something More, the YouTube channel that is currently in Guatemala. He was previously in Nicaragua. His family are currently expats, but they are not immigrants. They have chosen no country to be permanent in, as far as I know, unless they just chose Guatemala. They are looking potentially to become immigrants. They're interested in immigration, but they haven't made their final decision as to location yet. So right now, they are simply expats moving from country to country, but without any plans to move back to their home country. So that's an interesting perspective, except I believe his wife is from Nicaragua. She is currently an expat, but he may end up being an immigrant and she may end up not being an immigrant, she may end up repatriating, right? So that gets even more complicated. But so that's kind of uh, an important perspective. Um, basically, anyone who fully immigrates and moves to a new place is going to be an expat in that perspective. They've left their home country. In the perspective of uh, people who move around, there's a lot of people who expat that are not immigrants. Emigration and expatting are really, really overlapping in this particular perspective. The one thing that I feel like may be applicable is that emigration may give you an implication that there is a counterpart immigration happening with it at all times, at which point you would only be able to be an emigrant if you were also an immigrant. I don't know if that's true. We're getting into some really difficult semantics in that particular case. Uh, in my case, I am also an immigrant because I have all three, right? But I think those are important terms. And I think Nomad Capitalist had that off just a little bit. And everyone uses these words wrong. We have a tendency to attribute wealth and power to the term expat and and poverty to the term immigrant, when in reality, it's nothing like that whatsoever. And he didn't do that. Like, he didn't say anything offensive, nothing like that. No, I just, I think that there's this nuance of being an expat that it really requires that you intend to be an expat, not that you're just on an extended vacation. That's a different thing. People, you don't go, so this, and this is the way you can tell, right? Did you go on vacation to Cancun this spring for spring break? Okay, did you consider yourself an expat while you were there. No, of course not. I'm on vacation. Okay. Did you stay for one week? What if you stayed for two weeks? What if you stayed for three weeks? What if you stayed for six months? What if you stayed for six years? At what point does your vacation that you're still returning from at the end turn into being an expat? Well, it doesn't, right? And traditionally vacations went on for a really long time. Six to 24 months was not unheard of back when travel was much harder. Today, travel's so easy. We have this feeling like you're, you're just going to keep your job and you get X amount of weeks per year. And so that's your vacation. But in reality, if you are able to just travel or you can work abroad or there's all kinds of things that allow for way longer vacations, just like they used to be in the old days. So having a definition where we just say, ah, people who've been here for a certain length of time suddenly turn from vacationers into expats, but the behavior is the same, doesn't make any sense. Expat is not another term for long-term vacation. It implies that you are not returning to your home country. That's an important part. It, you can move around. You don't have to be an immigrant, but I do think you need to not be intending to go back. It is not a vacation where you're just an open-ended vacation and going home. I realize legally, you may be doing that and you may have the right to return home, but it is whether you intend to return home is what makes the difference. And without that, I think the words really get stupid, right? In if you look at nomad capitalist and you look at his definition of expat, he literally just defined a person on vacation, open-ended vacation, <clears throat> and that's it. But we have a term for that. It's a traveler or a tourist or on vacation. We don't need to take expat and apply it to that as some kind of cool version that now no one can use because now we're just going to laugh at you and say, <laughs> do you mean you're on vacation? Like, that's just dumb. But that's, that's how he's using it so that everyone who's on vacation in Cancun for the weekend at an all-inclusive resort can be like, ah, I'm expatting for the weekend. No, that's, that's not what it means.
just a quick ex extra bit of definition with that in my own personal context. My family became expats in 2015. That's when we officially left our home country but did not find a place to go. At that point, we were traveling around and, and very uh, nomadic, but we were not with any intention to return to our home country. To visit, yes. See family, all that stuff. Like we would go back, but we're not moving back. And so, twenty since twenty fifteen, so basically a decade, we've been expats. But we only officially moved uh, full time back to Nicaragua and began the process of being immigrants in twenty twenty one. So a little bit over three years now. Nicaragua considers us nine years here, but that's a different story. But it's three years of completely dedicated intent to immigrate. To Nicaragua or intent to, to never move on as our permanent base. And so we are immigrants in Nicaragua. If we used the nomad capitalist definition, we would then have to travel from Nicaragua to be expats from Nicaragua. That's a point where it would get confusing is if you use immigration correctly, then expatting would move along with your immigration. So it would become in theory, once you immigrate somewhere, you couldn't be an expat anymore because that would be your home country and you can't then, uh, unless you then move on from there, be an expat. That is not how anyone intends to use it. So I think that itself uh, pokes a hole in the, the attempt to define it that nomad capitalist has. I think expat is this permanent status from your home country. It has to be, not a temporary status from your current residence.